Hey, everyone. <laughs> okay, hi, everyone. We're still waiting on people to join in. I see some people that I know here. Zach Martinucci and Wendy, Susan Hamer, uh, Silvia Bizio, we have a real live Italian in the house. Joyce Nybart, Renee Wasserman from St. Louis. We have Joan Abrams, David Palmer, Catherine. Okay, so listen, before I meet everybody, um, ciao, Silvia, ciao. <laughs> we are real Italians in the house. We are making real Italian food today. Uh, I could speak to you all in Italian. We're not getting started yet, but, um, okay. So Joan Abrams, we're gonna unmute you so I can answer your questions that you have about yesterday's class. So Joan, I am, well, you actually don't need to be unmuted, but I'm gonna talk to Joan or anyone who was in yesterday's class who has a question about the broth. Her question is um, the barley, when she added the barley into the, into the lentil soup, doesn't that, we need a lot of broth. The answer is yes, it does. You might need to add more broth uh, because the barley absorbs a lot. So that's just, cooking is not just following recipes. It's an art. If you see that your soup needs more broth, you add it. Yes, barley does absorb a lot. Um, and the other question you asked is when do I take the vegetables out of the broth and can you use them? Um, that is something I should have addressed yesterday. You leave them in there the whole time but there, the vegetables in your broth can get used. So you can take out the carrots and the onion and, if, and the celery. And if you were to also add, let's say, sweet potato in there for more flavor or uh, a celery root, you could take the carrot, celery, onion out of there and the sweet potato or the celery root or all of them, the parsnips, whatever root vegetables are in there and blend them with broth and turn it into a soup. Um, the question is, is would you peel the carrots? Well, I'm not sure you would serve boiled carrots. So, I mean, I don't peel them, but if you want to serve the boiled carrots as a as part of your dinner or something, then yes, you would peel them first. But I have a page in my book that says, I don't even own a peeler. And I really don't even own a peeler. I can't stand peeling things. Um, so we are two minutes away. So just David is asking, can I address a little bit more about seasonal veggies and fruits now that the farmer's markets are open? Well, yeah, we're in a change of time right now. So I don't know exactly what you're going to find at the farmer's market. Because we're sort of shifting from winter to do, um, winter to spring. So and I haven't been to the farmer's markets in a couple weeks. Um, so buy whatever you can that's fresh. You have just learned how to make soup from anything. Today you're going to learn how to make pasta from anything, and um, you have my book, so you're going to learn to make a cobbler from anything <laughs> in there. Risotto, we're going to learn to make risotto from anything, so have fun with what there. I need to actually turn my... Um, Hold on, give me a second. We're going to start in one second. Okay, and I need to turn off my phone. Sorry, I need to, to do something to my phone. Bear with me. Andrew, you're so excited. Okay, hold on. How do I get back on? Okay, we're back. Okay. Um, okay. Andy Harrow says she's so excited to watch her favorite chef. Well, Andy Harrow was, is the mom of one of my um, best friends in nursery school who I was in love with, who at three years old decided I was going to marry Andy Harrow's son. I was supposed to marry Jason Harrow by the time I was four years old. It didn't happen, but it makes me so happy that Andy is coming to my cooking classes and is become a wonderful cook. Okay, so we're gonna start. Hello, everyone. Um, I Hi, thanks for waving. I'm Ilana Horwich. I am a teacher of intuitive cooking. I am the author of Meal and the Spiel, How to Be a Badass in the Kitchen. Um, I lived in Italy for five years. I did not go to learn how to cook. 
but that is just one of the things that you will learn in Italy if you keep a curious mind. That is what the Italians do. They cook, especially because because I just went there on my bat mitzvah money and money I'd earned working for my dad one summer. I was just 20 years old and I was on a budget. I was working in bars. So you don't eat out all the time when you're on a budget. You eat at home. And if you want to learn to cook well, you learn from the Italians. So I'm going to be teaching you today how to make a pasta or a pasta sauce from anything. And just to remind you, this is a live cooking class. Um, I am going to answer your questions all throughout the class. There is a chat box on the bottom. Please feel free to uh, post any comments or to ask any questions during the class. When I have a pause, I will turn over to my right to my computer and I will answer your questions as best as I can. Okay, so... To get started, oh, I also will say this, my friend Silvia Bizio is on the line. She is um, a, a real live Italian. So she is from Rome, Roma, the exact same place where I lived for many years. And so I may be calling upon Silvia to make sure that I'm getting the Italian just right, just so you know that what I'm teaching you is authentic. And um, actually what I'm gonna be teaching you right now, I mean, the Italians are in quarantine. We know that, we read the news, what's happening in Italy. And, so much love to Mama Italia. I love Ital Italy so much. Italy gave me so much love when I needed it most. Italy welcomed me into her arms um, and gave me so much love. So I sent so much love back to Italy. But I will say one thing that the Italians right now, they're not wondering what to eat, okay? They are eating well, they are making pasta, and they know how to make a pasta from anything. And so now I'm going to just be the messenger and message to you what I have learned from the Italians. Allora. Allora, it means, uh, so then. It's what the Italians say. Allora. Allora. So let me teach you the three, the, three basic, the three ingredients that are needed to whip up a sauce from anything. Okay? So we're talking about olive oil, olio, aglio is garlic, and red pepper flakes. So together they're called... Olio, aglio, peperoncino, or aglio, olio, peperoncino. And those three ingredients can be used together on their own to make a pasta called aglio, olio, which is just like garlic and, and oil, or it can be used as the base for any other sauce. Um, Sylvia, send me love back to me. Ciao, bella. Okay, so first thing that we're going to do who here actually heated my other I'm gonna do this I'm gonna move this to the side I'm gonna first show you the quickest how to order turn this on okay so let's talk about opening up a garlic right now um you know Sylvia please type in the box I, I do not chop my garlic I, what I find is that most Italians are not using chopped garlic the Italians don't like to actually smell like garlic or to taste a strong um flavor of garlic it's used really as the undercurrent to then flavor the oil so I'm just opening up my garlic by putting pressure on it. I'm not banging it with my hands. I'm putting it in from my belly. I got a few cracks in there and the peel will just automatically peel open, okay? So we, now I've gotta let this heat up for a second. What else can I tell you? How about I tell you something else like how to choose an olive oil? Well, we're always choosing olive oil in dark glass, and we are always using extra virgin. So dark glass prevents the oil from, it, it, it protects the oil is what I want to say. And we are going to be using peperoncino, which is red pepper flakes. Uh, if you don't have red pepper flakes, you're not going to be using cayenne or jalapeno or anything like that. You're just going to have to leave it out. Okay. So as soon as this heats up, I'm letting this get hot, we are going to add some olive oil. So the first recipe that I'm teaching you is this garlic, olive oil, red pepper flakes. That's it. We're going to put spaghetti directly into there. Okay. Now, the wonderful thing about the Italians is that they finish going to the discotheque at four o'clock in the morning. They're, well, maybe it's changed a little bit now, but when I was living there, they weren't like, hey, let's go get a taco or a burger. Like, because there's nothing open. You're not eating tacos and burgers in the middle of the night in Italy. What you're going home and they make a pasta. Ah, let's go home and make an aglio olio. Let's make a two spaghetti, they say. Let's make due, due, due spaghetti. 
So they are making, 20 year olds are making this recipe all the time. So this is a wonderful thing for college kids to learn. Honestly, this thing that college kids have to go eat pizza and get fat, it's not about getting fat, but they should learn how to make this. Like all, every college kid should know how to do this. So I'm just putting olive oil in. I'm using enough olive oil to I see a little something green in there. Um, well, it's gonna stay. It's a piece of it's a piece of my kale. Um, I'm using enough olive oil that's gonna be able to coat my spaghetti. And I'm not putting a lot of spaghetti in here, so that's all the olive oil I'm using. And I'm gonna put the garlic in. Okay. Now it's still not hot enough. Let me heat it up. And I'm going to add my pepperoncino now. Sylvia might add hers later. Some people add their pepperoncino later. And you'll add as much as you want it to be spicy. You will have to test your pepperoncino, okay? Um, David's asking me, do I have a gas or electric stove? I have an electric stove because I live in an apartment building. Uh, I would have a gas stove over an electric stove any day. I mean, this is not my first choice, but I live in an apartment building. So, I'm going to add a little my pepperoncino in here right now. And Jill is asking me, ah, oh, oh fabulous. Sylvia says she adds her pepperoncino the same time as the garlic. Me too, anche io. That means we are on the same wavelength, but I'm not sure everyone, perfect, perfect. I am right in line with the real Romana. Um, Jill, how long does olive oil last in the jar? Well, let's put it to you this way. Um, if you're having trouble with your olive oil last thing, it means you need to be cooking more. Um, it'll last like a long time, but it needs to be in dark glass and you keep it in your cupboard. Then it should last. If you open up your olive oil and you're like, that doesn't smell good, it's done. Okay. But I mean, I have never had that problem. But then again, if you guys have never cooked with me, you know, I go through a lot of olive oil. So what I want to show you now, and obviously when we finish this, um, when we finish this and I have a, uh, I have a cooking show <laughs> going out of my house, I will have overhead cameras. I'm trying to see if you guys can see this. What's happening right now is little bubbles are forming around the garlic, okay? Now those little bubbles are very important. That is the garlic infusing its flavor into the olive oil. So we are not actually gonna be eating the garlic we're gonna be using the oil, which is flavored with garlic, which is flavored with the red pepper flakes, to then flavor the spaghetti or to flavor the tomatoes that I'm gonna show you how to use. So these are getting nice and um, bubbly around them. I'm not gonna let them burn, okay? If I do let them burn, what do I do? Anyone know? If you burn the garlic, does anyone know what you do? I'm gonna tell you. You throw it out and you start over. That's it, you just dump it out, wipe a paper towel and start over. The first time I taught this class, we made six different pastas. I burned the garlic three times. Guess what? It taught everybody what to do if you burn the garlic. So there we go. I have this garlic infusing its flavor. I want it to just get a little bit blonde, not cooking it too much, and then it will be done. Okay. So it's just gonna be done in just a second. And in the meantime, I'm gonna heat up this other pan. Actually, I'm gonna just switch it over and I'm gonna let it finish on its own. Guys, that's it. That's all that we're doing. That is aglio olio pepperoncino. I'm gonna leave it and we're gonna work with it later once I make my spaghetti, okay? Anyone has any questions about that? Let me show you what it looks like. It's, it could probably, it's, it's still cooking because it's heat hot, but it's still blonde. You see, it's still like the same color. We're just, we're trying to get as much juice out of the garlic without burning or coloring up the garlic. Let me see if I have any, um, what, is it on low so it doesn't burn? And what about using a flavored olive oil? Okay, uh, it's not on low, it's on medium to medium high. I also am a cooking expert. Um, if you wanna prevent it from burning, stick to medium. Low is okay, but you're gonna be there for like a long time. Medium, I would say, is like the way to go. Um, you know, I'm do it on medium high because I like to work fast and blah, blah, blah. That's how I'm doing it. And can you use a flavored olive oil? Uh, no, you may not. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the flavor is coming from the garlic. That's it. You add the flavor. Nobody else is adding the flavor to your pasta except for you. End of story. 
All right, so that is it. Um, okay, so now I have, I'm gonna do this again, the exact same thing, aglio, olio, peperoncino, garlic, olive oil, red pepper flakes, except for this time, I'm gonna show you how to make a tomato sauce. So, let's get this nice and high, see if you have any questions. Generally, just two cloves of garlic, garlic Joan is asking. Yeah, that's my standard. I usually do about two cloves of garlic per batch. Um, you know, even for a bigger batch, maybe I put in three, you know, I, I tend to, that would be my minimum, would be like two cloves of garlic, but you're not like putting tons and tons of garlic in here. This is just enough to give the, uh, to give the oil some flavor. And again, it's going to be up to you to decide how much pepperoncino, and there's only one way to find out how spicy yours is at home, and that is to try it. That's it. You, you try it. And when it's new, right from the market, it's probably spicier than it is later. So you just have to get to know it. Um, this particular pasta, aglio olio, is tends to go spicy. This one here, we're not making spicy, but we're still going to use this. Pam Bear. Hi, Pam Bear. Um, who cleans up the kitchen when you have four kids at home? Yeah, exactly. That is the hardest part of cooking. Anybody who knows me, I am not a lover of cleaning the kitchen. Um, uh, that is a hundred thousand percent true. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Notes like that are most welcome. I love, that's the reality of it. That's the reality. You know what? You get your kids to clean it up. They want to eat. Okay. So we're going to open up this garlic again. Remember, I'm not smashing it. I'm using my, my belly, my belly. And I am just putting my weight into there and then it will easily um, open and look at how it fell apart. That's good because what's happening is we're actually opening up the surface area. So more flavor from the garlic is going to be coming out of it. So, so those cracks are good. Okay. See, it happened again. I got a little crack in there and that is good. So any other questions? No, I'm going to go on. Who make a tomato sauce? There's two ways to go about it, okay? One is you use the fresh tomato, like these cherry tomatoes. You do that, go to my Instagram and watch my latest IGTV. It's the same exact thing. It goes right in here. But canned tomatoes are actually something that Italians use all the time, okay? They're using good quality canned tomatoes, but to canned tomatoes are what you find all year round, and they're wonderful inside of stews, and they're wonderful to make pasta. So this is getting hot. Let's get our aglio olio going in here. So, uh-oh, uh -oh, it's getting really hot. So hold on, I'm going to put carrots in here, and let me explain to you why afterwards. Okay. Garlic is going in. Give me, give me a second. I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing. And pepperoncino. Okay, I had this one really hot. Let me get rid of them. Okay, so that's wonderful that that happened because now I can explain to you. First of all, the reason that I'm adding carrots to this sauce is because we're going to be using canned tomatoes and the carrots will sweeten it. Some Italians, even the actual real live Italians, will add a touch of sugar to their sauce. Silvia Bizio, do you add sugar to your sauce? I want to know. I do not. I think it's cheating and I don't do it. But what I do add is some carrot sticks into the bottom. Okay, that's what's happening here. We're burning the garlic. Um, that's fine. Hold on. Let me show you what we're going to do here. We're going we're to stop and throw out and start again, just like I told you. Okay, let me show you what happened. So I was trying to speed this up. And instead, I burnt the garlic. Okay, this is wonderful. People love it. Their favorite part of my cooking classes is when I mess stuff up, which, believe me, happens often. So do you see how that's browned? It's too brown. It's going to make the whole thing bitter. That, no, that's not happening. We're starting over. It's not a failure. It's an opportunity to start again. And we're just going to dump, hold on, I'm going to just dump this out real quick here. Okay, down, I'm gonna get a paper towel. Um, I just put that, I had a bowl in my, in my sink, so I just poured it into a bowl. I'm just wiping this clean, and we're gonna start again. There you go, I had just talked about to you, what do you do if you burn it? You start again. 
You know, that's the thing that you do not get. You don't get this on the Food Network. You do not get chefs messing up on the Food Network. Um, you know, this is like actually a really important part of learning is watching somebody who knows what they're doing mess up because then we all learn how to, you know, how to, how to change. So let's get our garlic ready again. Let me see if I have any questions. Ah, she, carrot, Sylvia says she didn't know about the carrot using to switch to sweeten the sauce. Yeah, that's my trick. I mean, some people actually add chopped carrot to their sauce. That's too much work for me. So I just put a little bit in there. It's a nice little touch. Um, can I use sun-dried tomatoes? That's a totally different sauce. It, you're not going to get a tomato sauce, but you can do aglio, olio, peperoncino, and some sun-dried tomatoes. Sure. Maybe you want to top that with some chopped basil or chopped parsley. That's it. You can do whatever you want on top of that. Um, why not just cut the clove in half? I don't know. If it's a big clove, you can cut it in half. That's fine. I just, they just happen to crack open a little bit, and that sort of works perfectly for me. Um, Susie, how thin are the carrot sticks and how many? I mean... Here, I'm gonna show you how thin the carrot sticks are. Not that thin. They just like this. They're just like I took a half a carrot and I cut them into four. So I put the gar. Usually I do the garlic first. I'm gonna do the carrot sticks. They're already in my hands. Do a little red pepper flakes, and we're starting over again. The carrots didn't burn, so they can go back in there. Something I like to do. My matzah um, is I like to actually hold the pan like this so that the garlic completely submerges in the oil, okay? And I also, in cooking class, I always tell people to commune with the garlic. So it's like I want my inner body, like my abdomen and my heart to commune with the garlic so I can feel it, I can feel it, believe me. People are like, are you crazy? And then they commune with the garlic and they know what I'm talking about. You need to have a connection to the food. You're not just watching the food, you are feeling the food. So we have this happening. Our garlic is adding some flavor in here. We're all okay. Let's see if we have any questions. Um, oh, San Marzano tomatoes are fantastic. That is normally what I use. Let me see what I have today. So these are imported Southern Italian tomatoes. These might as well be San Marzano. They probably don't have the like the mark of San Marzano because they're not, you know, whatever, don't have a stamp of approval, but Southern Italian tomatoes, that's where San Marzano are from. I'm making a smaller amount because it's just me. And I found these at Italy. Unless you go to Italy, you won't find these. A small jar of pomodorini. They're like smaller, smaller tomatoes, but it's just a smaller can. So that's what's going to work for me. Okay. Um, now, what I would normally do is I would take what's in, my, in the can and I put it in the blender. And I just give it a tiny little blitz, and then I put it in there. That's one way. Grandma Italian style takes the tomatoes, squishes them carefully because they can get all over the place, and then puts them in. So first I'll just put the juice. The pot. Squeezing them. So I did an answer, a question that came up, not a question, but something that happened a while back. If you remember my olive oil was like about to burn, I put it in there and I threw in the carrots. Well, if your food's about to burn, like if your garlic's about to burn, if your oil's about to burn, um, and I could tell because it was smoky, is you throw in something with water and carrots have water. And so carrots will actually cool down the process. Carrot, so the carrots prevent it from burning and just now. The tomatoes, it was getting really hot. The tomatoes have that cooled it all. So, okay. Um, I'm looking at your questions. How much extra virgin olive oil? Enough to generously coat the pan and just note that when you are working with tomatoes, tomatoes are oleophilic, I say. They, are, they love olive oil. So when you're using uh, tomatoes, 
you always want to use a lot of olive oil. Olive oil is not just to coat the pan, it's for the flavor. And in, since we're sort of like, and you know, that this is not quite the Great Depression, but kinda, um, you know, if you need this sauce to go longer for more people, you add more olive oil and that will help expand it. This blue pan, can I tell you about it? You do not need to buy it for this, but I just happen to have it and I love it. This is a Le Creuset, um cast iron, enamel coated cast iron. It's wonderful for like a meat sauce or you can make stewed chicken in here, stewed meats, um, meatballs. I made some soup in here yesterday. It's just a really well coated pan. Can I use a, a potato masher instead of your hands? Andy, that is too much work. Just stick them in a blender and blend it and stick it in here. That's gonna be way easier. Potato masher is gonna do that, but the hands are kind of fun. You know, you get, you get, you get this tactile connection to the food. Allora, okay, you guys all remember allora. So then on to the next, allora, we need to add the two next ingredients. Well, the one ingredient you cannot live without is salt. So I always talk, tell people to um, use a salt jar and use their fingers, and we are going to be sprinkling salt. Um, I normally use kosher salt. That's my go-to. Um, believe it or not, I am out of kosher salt right now. Well, and so I have some in the mail, but I don't know when it's getting there, but I ordered like a bunch. So right now what I have is I have two different kinds of sea salt. One is more coarse and one is more fine. They're both high quality sea salts. And that's what I'm using. But kosher salt would be your go-to salt. Table salt, I do not use at all whatsoever. Even in the time of quarantine, I still wouldn't use kosher table salt, I don't think. I mean, okay. And now since this one, this tomato sauce, we're making it a sweeter tomato sauce. We added the carrots to sweeten it. And I'm going to add basil. I'm going to talk to you about a different way to make, go about this tomato sauce, but since this is a sweeter one, I'm going to use basil, and I don't cut the basil, I don't take the basil off the stems, I just put the whole thing in there as is. And personally, I would love to have even a little more basil, but that is the end of my basil. I do have some in my freezer that I saved, but that's the end of my fresh basil, and that's what's happening in there. I'm just going to turn that up, and we're going to let that cook. You can let it cook on low for as long as you like to, but this is a cooking class and I don't want it to go on forever. So, um, and I'm using the, the spoon to just burst some of the tomatoes. Any questions? Let's see. Tonya, only, only whole canned tomatoes or can you use crushed or diced? Very good question. Um, if given my choice, I'm going to always tell you to buy whole tomatoes. They're going to they maintain the flavor better. So if you're going to the market now and all you find is crushed tomatoes, obviously get them. You can find it, you know, get them. But if you were, if you were going to be following the meal and the spiel, how to be a badass rules of making the top quality Italian food in your home, even though you're not in Italy, then you are going to be whole tomatoes, not big crushed ones. Now I'm just going to taste this for the salt and see how it is. It's delicious. Okay, so let's see. Now is a wonderful time for me to answer some questions. If you guys have some, because we're gonna start making our pasta. I have a special surprise for you in my oven and I'm hoping it's gonna be done in time. Let me just check. Oh, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. I'm gonna leave it in there for just a minute. I have something really special for you guys. Okay, so if I don't have any more questions, I'm going to start to talk to you about making an al dente pasta. So this is, we're just gonna let, keep cooking and we're waiting for it till it just, it's not so watery and it's, it's not gonna take too long. Okay, so can you guys see this? You can see, you can, I'm just gonna leave this here. Okay. So what you cannot see inside of this is that it is at a full rolling boil, all right? I'm not talking about like a few little bubbles coming up. I'm talking about a full rolling boil. You do not put your pasta into the pot unless your water is at a full rolling boil, okay? And you'll also notice that even though I am one person here, I'm still using a big pot of pasta. All right, if, if, if Silvia Bizio comes into your house and you're using a little container and you're putting spaghetti in there, 
you give a Roman like, oh my God, you see the way she making the pasta? Like you, then you absolutely do not use a small thing for pasta. The pasta has to breathe, okay? It has to dance inside of the pot. So even though it's just me, I'm using a big pot of full, and it's at a full rolling boil. The next thing I'm going to do is to salt the water. I salt the water after the pasta, after the water is at a full rolling boil. And I'm putting enough salt so that the water tastes like the sea, okay? This is going to give some of you a mild heart attack. I'm aware, I've taught this class many times, um, but like this is the amount of salt I'm talking about, okay? You could even potentially do more. It would not hurt, and it's going in there. You will not be eating all of that salt, okay? I promise you, when you dump the water out, it's gonna be very salty. Not all of that salt is going into the noodles, but you need to have the right ratio of molecules, HTO molecules, the salt molecules, for the salt, for the pasta to get the right amount of salt in it. That will change your pasta right then and there. If you're going to a restaurant and the restaurant's pasta is better than your pasta at home, that's why, and let me tell you, that's the only reason why, because very few places actually make pasta as good as I'm teaching you to make it well. Okay, now, next thing we are going to do is use some spaghetti. Okay, let's keep down a little bit. Oh, no, not next thing we're gonna do. So, oh yeah, no, next thing we're gonna do is use some spaghetti. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm a little all over the place. So I'm gonna put some spaghetti in. Um, I would say that one pack of spaghetti is the, is right for four to six people. The Italians will use it to feed six, Americans use it to feed four, to use four, to feed four. So that's why there's good. Um, and this is just going into the water. And the first thing that we're doing is we're actually going to stir it. You will notice that I did not put any oil into this water, okay? The oil is in this pan right here. So as soon as this pasta is done, as soon as it's done, it's going to go right into the sauce where the oil is. The way that I'm making sure that it doesn't stick to itself is that I am stirring it right now. Um, if when you're using spaghetti, it's actually quite a good idea to use tongs and you can stir it with the tongs. Now, let's just talk timing for a second. Um, until you are an expert at knowing when your pasta is al dente, an expert in making the sauce, I'm going to recommend that first you make the sauce and then you just let it be until your pasta is ready, okay? And just before your pasta is ready, you can heat up your sauce. So let's just take a look at our sauce right now. Okay, let me show you something. It's like pretty much getting ready here. Can you see that? Do you see how when I, oh, it's hot. Do you see how when I, Parted, it's sort of like the Red Sea. It's like not, it's a little watery on the bottom, but it's like parts like the Red Sea. That's telling me it's nearly done. However, when I lift it up, there's, there's water on the bottom. So we're trying to get rid of that water. Uh, you never, ever, 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 ever want to serve watery pasta. Again, you feel an Italian, okay? That is not okay. While this is cooking, I'm going to show you two other things. One, I'm going to talk to you about gluten free pasta. I, I like it, okay? Um, I don't have a problem with it, and I use good brands. My favorite brand is this, is a Tinkiata brown rice pasta. I love it. So, you know, you need still need the salt, all that. Figuring out the al dente is, is, you know, it works very similarly to a regular pasta. And same with, I like also Jovial pasta, which is a good gluten-free pasta. So no problem using that, as long as you are salting your water. The next thing that we're gonna talk about right now is the surprise that I have. Let me just make a little space. I think that I could be called the messy chef and that would not be a lie. Okay. So what I just took out of my oven is a spaghetti squash. And um, for those of us in California, we like to not eat carbs. I mean, those with California, please, all over everywhere, doesn't like to eat carbs. Um, and I have an entire section in my book, an entire chapter called, I Can't Believe It's Not Pasta, in which I use a variety of vegetables instead of noodles. And spaghetti squash is a wonderful um, 
replacement. Now, granted, you might need a little other food in your meal because it's a lot lighter, but it works really well. And I, in my book, I have it for spaghetti squash primavera in which I put a, this sauce on it and then lots of other vegetables, but you can't go through everything all at once. So I just cut open my spaghetti squash. I pierced it a couple times with a knife before it goes into the oven. Um, and I just am going to scoop out the seeds. Um, Joyce, you had asked a question that is, do I add any water? And I don't know what that means. Are you trying to, are you asking me if I add water to the sauce? If I have pasta water to the sauce, that I do teach in my, in my more advanced level cooking. But if that's your question, please type it in. Where is it? Are you wondering if I add water? Okay. Any other questions? I think I answered the other questions that are up there. Um, okay. Do I add oil? Oh, no, I already answered that. I do not add oil to the water. No oil to the water. Never, 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 never. Okay. Taking the seeds out of here is what I'm doing. This is, a, ouch, it's really hot. Normally, I would say let it cool before a little bit, but I'm just going to do this way. Okay. Next is, I still have a little bit of seeds in here, guys, but... I don't, I don't want to see. I'm the one eating here. I don't mind. You'll, you'll spend more time um, doing this. Is I need a fork. Give me a break. Give me a second. Okay. I also got my cheese. So now I'm going to take a fork and I am just going to fork this. Fork it. You just fork it and it becomes spaghetti squash. So I'm also going to need a bowl. It's so hot. But that is how you get your spaghetti squash to become spaghetti. Okay, so I'm just gonna fork it all out. It's really hot. Okay, do this is a question is do I after the pasta is removed, do I add pasta water to the sauce? I do when I'm not teaching a beginning class. Um, I would take out a little bit of pasta. I'll show you what I do. I would take out a little bit of the water right now. And I leave it on the side, starchy, salty water. And then I undercook the pasta a little bit and finish in here. But maybe we'll try that. Let's see. Let's see where we're at. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that this time. Um, but that I would say is I explain that in my book. And I know, Joyce, you have it, how to use that exactly. But let's say that's not the most important thing I want you to learn. The most important thing I want you to learn is how to make a sauce and how to make a pasta al dente properly. Okay. So we are going to just, let's just put this, oh, it's so hot. Just dump it out in here. Seems like pasta is boiling for a long time, somebody says. Well, let's test it then. It's going to take a good 10 minutes. I have like a, yeah, I know it's not done. It's not done. And it's not salty enough. You guys think I'm crazy for adding all that salt? Believe me, use more. You can add it in midterm if you need to. I have my colander already in the sink. We do not ever want to overcook our pasta. That is another thing that will give Italians a heart attack. They do not like overcooked pasta. If somebody overcooks the pasta, they'll talk about it all throughout the dinner. I overcooked the pasta. I overcooked the pasta. All throughout the dinner. This is what I have, but I overcooked the pasta. Believe me, it's like really a lot of shame to overcook the pasta, but we'll do it. We're all, we all have done it. Um, okay, let's get rid of this. So our pasta is nearly done. Our spaghetti squash is done. Let's talk about another very important ingredient, unless there's another question. How long did I cook the spaghetti squash for? That was a small one, an hour. You know, I put it in at 400, maybe a little less. It took about an hour. Till it's soft, you just can squeeze it like that with my oven mitts, it's soft. This is gonna be done in just a moment, but I will tell you that the cheese that we're gonna be using on top of here is Parmigiano Reggiano. Those of you that have come to classes know I've said this many, many times, and my opinion on it does not change. 
Parmesan cheese is the bastardization of the king of all Italian cheeses, Parmigiano Reggiano. Just like champagne must come from Champagne region, this must come from the region between Parma and Reggio Emilia. There is no substitution. And if you are using Parmigiano in your quarantine, your quarantine is not that bad. Uh, it actually, you can survive a lot of things with Parmigiano Reggiano on hand. So that's gonna be very important. Let's taste the noodles again. We do not want to overcook them. Oops. There, it's okay. Okay. It's like, you want there to just be giving away to the bite. Like the bite's still there, but just gone away. Like that's when you want it. I would say 30 more seconds, but since we have a little bit of pasta water, we're just gonna go for it. Now, look what I'm doing. I am putting my aglio olio over the flame and I'm adding the pasta to it, okay? So that's happening over the flame. It probably already should have been on the flame, but um, this I'm gonna keep because this I'm gonna use for my spaghetti squash. And you see what I'm doing? I'm not toss, I'm not stirring it. I'm tossing it, I'm tossing it, I'm tossing it. And if I were to do that in here, I would do the exact same thing in the tomato sauce, okay? So I just toss it for about a minute and then we're done. I'm gonna put some in here also to be honest with you and done half and half. Well, it wouldn't hurt. We can do that. We can do that. We can just add it a little bit to the side. It's okay, it's all the same ingredients, right? Okay, so a minute you're tossing it, you're tossing it, you're tossing it. There you go. You can't eat it. Okay. So, aglio olio peperoncino. It's gotten really hot on here. Okay. This is the first one. How do we eat it? We actually eat it plain. You can eat it with pecorino romano. It's not eaten with Parmesan cheese, or it can be eaten with parsley, or it can be eaten exactly plain as is. So let's just see how this is. It's delicious. It's super simple, but it's delicious. I personally find it needs a little more salt. Those noodles were not as salty as I know you think they were. Add a little bit of sea salt to the top. Nothing wrong with that. Mm. Delicious. Okay, next. Let's try this tomato pasta. So sorry you guys can't eat with me. Feel a little bad about that, but what are we gonna do? We're gonna put Parmigiano de Giano on here. Oh my gosh, all my everything's pulled up. Okay. Um Parmigiano de Giano goes on here. Another thing that you can add, which is a really nice touch, is toasted pine nuts. So I happen to have some because I have extra ones and that's a really nice way to get a little extra protein. And then you just eat this fantastic tomato, basil sauce with pine nuts and some parmigiano. Now, let me just show you how to spin a spaghetti. You start spinning it on the side. Because if you spin it right from the top, what's going to happen? It's too big. You can't eat it. So you're going to spin it over from the side. And that way, when you pick it up, there's less on the spoon. And there will always be some hanging down. And that's fine. You just put it in your mouth and, and quietly slurp it up. Mm. Guys, this, 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 this. Um, Next, I'm going to be putting this sauce directly on my spaghetti on my spaghetti squash. And the reason, one of the reasons I made spaghetti squash is because I ate pasta the other day, and 
I don't know. I just thought this would be a really nice thing for me to have at home. Um, do I want to eat the carrots? Sure. Why not? I wouldn't normally serve it with my pasta, but on spaghetti squash, it's kind of nice. It has like a little bit of that primavera thing. Uh, if you have kids, you can actually put the carrots in a blender with the sauce and then you can hide the carrots in there. So this is another lovely thing. Let's see how it is. Also goes very well with parmigiano, parmigiano and pine nuts, actually. Let's definitely show you to put pine nuts on here. Pine nuts, parmigiano reggiano. And let's see if you guys have questions. I am with Ilana. I never use parmesan nor pecorino on aglio olio. That is true. I will say, Sylvia, that the aglio olio is a Roman specialty, and Sylvia is from Rome, so that's the end. But in, in Tuscany, they will put a pecorino on the on the uh, aglio olio. But that is right. You eat it plain, maybe some parsley. Other questions? Um, yeah, sure. If you whatever is your local pecorino, Stephanie, then you can go ahead and use that. I allow people to put pecorino on their aglio olio, but if you're in Sylvia's house, you probably it will not offer it to you. Um, what am I tasting for when the pasta is done? I think I said that you just need the bite to just bear give away. I mean, it's just like you've got a bit of bite to the tooth, and it's about to give away. That's what it's done. Mm. Amazing. What else? Oh, fabulous question. Joan wants to know, what about simmering the sauce with the top on? I had a woman reading this recipe from my book and just emailed me. And she says, my, my sauce didn't cook. It was still watery after half an hour. I go back and forth with her. Turns on out, she was doing with the top on. No, no. Uh, when you are making a tomato sauce, the top has to be off. What we want to happen is we want the water to evaporate and we want the flavor of the tomato to stay into the pot, into the pan. Okay, if you're making a meat sauce that's cooking for hours, okay, maybe you have the cover on, but this is not what we're doing right here. We're doing a tomato sauce cover off. When you are have the cover on, you are steaming and nobody wants to eat steamed vegetables. They want sauteed vegetables. That's what tastes good. Um, any other questions? How do I keep my spaghetti squash from being too watery? Huh. No, my spaghetti squash doesn't get watery. That's not a problem. The zucchini noodles can get watery. You just can't overcook them, undercook them. Undercook them is the way to go. They'll still keep cooking afterwards. If I can't find ground meat, what is an easy way to incorporate protein? Okay, or chicken breast. I'm gonna make an example out of you. Um, in my book, <laughs> Silvia Bizio, you're gonna love this. In my book, I have, um, a, well, everything that is in my book that is in a square is what I call classroom corners. And it's me being the teacher and teaching you all of the things that are, that all of the questions that people have in my cooking classes. And one of the questions that people, not a question that they have, but something that I think is very important is my pasta faux pas, okay? Let me read these to you. I won't read them all to you, but I'm going to give you a little example of how this goes. You should have had my page open to it. Here we go. Pasta faux pas. Do you see this? How much writing there is in here? There's a lot that you can go wrong with in pasta to make an Italian think that you are a ridiculous American who doesn't know how to eat. Um, one of them, number one, is that you add a topping to your pasta. You are not adding a topping to this, okay? You are eating this as is. You can use parmigiano reggiano, you can use pine nuts, and that's it. That's it. Um, if you would like chicken in your meal, then after you're done with the pasta, you eat chicken. End of story. If you would like to make a meat sauce, you can absolutely make a meat sauce, um, but that meat sauce is made in a different way. The meat sauce is made with a sofrito at the base, which is what we learned yesterday, carrot, onion, celery, chopped very finely. And that would be a different process and there would be wine and it doesn't take 20 minutes. So if you want extra protein, get, get put pine nuts on there or eat your chicken later. Other questions. Um, do I, Sylvia's asking me if I do a cacio pepe. Sylvia, I'm not an expert on cacio pepe, but if you guys want to learn how to do a cacio pepe, write it in and say, yes, I want to learn a cacio pepe and I will uh, become expert at it and teach it to you. It doesn't use this exact process. It's another process. Um, Sylvia's saying, yes, no pot, no topping. Sylvia says she has a trick to see when the pasta is done. 
if there's a little white inside the pasta, when you take a bite, it's not done yet. That's a good trick. That is a wonderful trick. Um, so unless there's any other questions, I am going to read you a, uh, I always like to finish a spiel with a spiel. And I, what, what spiel am I going to read? Um, I think I might just read this, Respect the Tomato. Well, I already just kind of told you all about that. So maybe I'm going to just read you the, the spiel for Alia Olio. Um, so many, so many things I want to always read. Alia Olio with garlic and red pepper flakes. Alia Olio isn't just a life-changing process. It's also the recipe Italians make when they have nothing in the house to eat. Nothing, of course, but spaghetti, olive oil, red pepper flakes, and salt. Those staples are the Italian equivalent of ketchup in the door in the fridge. Because it requires so little prep and so few ingredients, aglio olio is the go-to for a 4 a.m. binge food after a night at the discoteca. If you add enough pepperoncino, it helps you sweat out the alcohol. Perhaps because there are so few ingredients, this is one of the hardest pasta dishes to perfect. Like a haiku with only three lines or a country album with only five subjects, trucks, prison, trains, mama, and getting drunk, the restrictions inspire the art. Every aspiring pasta cook should start here for two reasons. First, you'll be surprised about how much you like it. And second, this dish will teach you to fully understand the importance of the flavor base used for the rest of these sauces. Because aglio olio originates from the spicy seaside city of Naples, okay, not Rome, but Naples, they're close, they're like cousins. If you top it with anything but cooling parsley, like cheese, for instance, a Neapolitan might attack you for breaking the culinary prohibition against consuming spicy food with cheese. That said, Florentine friends of mine, not, not oh, sorry, far enough from Naples to escape its culinary decrees, are known to top the aglio olio with some sharp pecorino romano. Hence, I offer it as an option for you to try as well. So for those of you that have my book, you know that all of the recipes go from easiest to hardest. And the first recipe in the chopped pasta chapter is aglio olio. Here's how I explain to you the rules for al dente pasta. The next one is aglio olio with botarga. Yummy, yummy. Italy is still open. You can get your botarga. Next one is, hold on, I'll shoot for you. Uh, next one is, sorry, penne al pomodoro, which is essentially what I just taught you, but we're using fresh tomatoes. Sorry, I can't switch, turn my pages. Here's another one you can try with thyme and mushroom and thyme. Aglio olio pepperoncino, mushroom and thyme. Another one that we can try is with kale, so we're gonna use kale and a little anchovy. And so we just keep building upon each other. This is rigatoni with tono and capri. We're adding tuna and capers to it. So every recipe just builds upon itself. This is pasta Francesca. This is named after Francesca Fantini, um, uh, Silvia. This, this is made with egg plant and, and mint and olives and called asparagus and nutmeg and lemon. So you see, everything is building upon itself. And in fact, I'll eventually teach you to make this. This is my eggplant tamburello. It is a cake, an eggplant pasta cake. The only sauce used in here is this sauce I just taught you right now. You know how to make pasta. You will undercook it by four minutes and then you will grill eggplant as I explain and you turn it into a cake. All you need is a spring form pan and it's actually quite easy. Um, we put some burrata in there too. So letting, letting you guys know, this book will teach you how to cook so that you never need a cookbook again. Honestly, if I could tell you that spirit spoke to me and told me to get this book done, two years ago, you have no idea what I, what I had to move through and live through inside myself personally to get this book out. And now I'm looking at it and I understand why I wrote this book when I did, because we're at this time right now. And this is like people's Bible right now. It is your, it's, you can't get it on Amazon. It's taking a month to get on Amazon, but you thank God I have copies in my warehouse. And so we decided to put it on sale. There's a 20% off sale on my book right now. If you go, you have to go to elanahorwich.com and type in the code capitalize kitchen badass 20 for 20% off. 
Okay, go to elonwarwitch.com, put in the code KITCHENBADASS20, all caps, and get 20% off. And there are signed copies there until the signed copies run out, but we've got books. And, you know, share that with your friends. This book teaches you how to cook from anything in the house. Um, and it is my pleasure to, to, to um, be here with everyone. I'm going to look and see if we have any other questions. Zach, oh, the eggplant, the eggplant cake is the best, says Zach. Thank you. Joyce loves the book. It's like having Ilana on your shoulder. Uh, thank you. Although only a thornap found Ilana. Um, thank you, Ilana. So informative. They, you guys want to learn cacio pepe. Why don't we do that very soon? Um, I just want to take a breath. I've been talking so loud and so fast between being Jewish and being basically Italian. I speak very, very, very fast. <laughs> um, thank you all for joining me today. Um, you know, cooking, I teach cooking because I truly believe that it is a way for us to accelerate and augment human connection here on planet Earth, that we can share love with each other. And I just please encourage you to, you know, whether you're cooking for others right now, please cook for others in your home, or if it's just for yourself, please take it as a time to practice because cooking is one way of many that we can make the world a smaller, happier, healthier, uh, warmer place. And with that, I'm signing off. <laughs> love you guys love you guys please tell your friends right bring them in here oh one more announcement next week we're going to be doing at different times and we're going to be at a different place okay we're going to move this over to social media we're going to try to we're tr plan is to broadcast this on instagram and facebook so it's easier for more people to join so just if we don't have your email on our mailing list, put your mailing list, put your email in the chat box so we can find you. And um, we are gonna keep the intimacy of it and I will still be answering all of your questions and I, I am here to serve. So lots of love to everybody. <laughs> Make it the best. Send me your photos. Post your photos, you know? Yeah, I see dancing happening. Amazing, amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, oh my God. Someone gave, Tonya gave her sister in law my book and she's already made the time roasted salmon. People have been, from our cooking class last week, everyone's made the salmon. From yesterday, I have so many people making soups. It's amazing. You guys are so amazing. Ciao. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you for doing these classes. It makes your stay at home so much happier. You are welcome, Judy. Thank you for giving me purpose. Although I do have a book that I want to be writing, guys. So I'm going to, once I figure out how to get everybody, get us, get these classes going smoothly, I'm going to, I'm going to hunker down and start writing. <laughs> so my pleasure to be here. Okay. Uh, be sure to send us feedback. We love it. We love it. Um, well, we have six more minutes. I mean, I think I'm done. Unless anyone, listen, I'm open to suggestions. Will you just put in the, put in the, what, if there's anything you want to learn, please put it into the comments. That's what I would love to have. And just please be alert. And, you know, for the next time we send you a mailer so we can all have you back together. Marlene made the lucky lentil soup and it was so delicious. She says, I'm wonderful. Well, thank you. I love you too. Wonderful. Thank you, Andy. Love you. Love you back. I love everyone. Sylvia, is your soup class on the site? I want to watch it. So listen, our soup class is on the site. Not our fault, but Zoom because it's so overwhelmed right now. Everyone doing online classes. The class, the video came out like smaller. So you have to like expand it on your screen. It, it's not our fault, um, but it is on my site and you can go there and you can look at the soup class. If you go to elanahorwich.com and go to the events or go to videos, it is there, it is there. Um, and people are asking for a Passover class. Okay, notes taken. We gotta figure out how to get Passover ingredients, but notes taken on that. Okay. Wonderful. Please share with your friends. Lots of love to everybody.
Bye bye. Bye. Okay, we're signing off. Ciao. 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 Ciao.